everybody, Art Ekman, David Bailey, Davey Coombs up top, Sun Devil Stadium as we get set for the 250 main. Two races, two different winners so far. Now, if a third different winner wins this race, he should eventually win the championship. That was the script last year. Well, it's looking like it can happen again this year. McGrath, it was picture of confidence tonight. He's riding flawless. There's some people uh, the last couple of weeks to think that he's going to come back and win the championship. If the record stands true, then he'll do that, and it'll be a big boost for his confidence, uh, just like it was for Emig last year. And with this progress throughout the season, Jeremy started out with a third in the opener, a second last week in Houston. He's due for a win. I mean, this is his kind of track. We saw him put the herd on Ezra Lust. We'll see how Lust responds to that. More than 50,000 fans here at Sun Devil Stadium. Another great crowd to watch round number th three as we take a look at the Suzuki Point standings right now. And we've got the tie at the top of the heat. It's Jeremy McGrath and Jeff Emmy tied for the Suzuki Points lead. A three-way tie for fourth, a three-way tie for eighth. Ezra Lusk winning last week. Oh, that was a happy day for Honda, breaking up their victory drought in only his second race with his new team. I just learned so much about the bike in a short amount of time that it was really amazing that I was able to really to get all that together as quick as I did. We've seen and heard about the difficulties of changing teams, but Ezra Lusk has made a quick and smooth transition. One of the keys is mechanic Mike Gossler. It's like meeting somebody new and trying to figure out their personalities and what it's going to take to work with them, and, you know, what it's going to take to keep them happy and what they like. I told him from the get-go, I was like, you know, you need to be straight up with me, be honest, be up front, and uh, tell me how you feel about anything, you know, when we're testing, if you don't like what's going on, let me know. He's real sensitive when it comes to a motorcycle setup, I and mean, it's just getting used to that, having a guy that you can just change things a millimeter here or a, a little tiny adjustment there, and he can feel it, you know, and he can tell you when he just sits on the bike that you change something. I, I think I'm really a thinker, and I know what feels good to me, I know what's worked for me before, and I know how when I test, I like to do things that I'm going to be in, in the race position or the race mode, you know, a race speed. He's been ready to go for a month, and he's kind of been so ready that he, he wanted to get this thing rolling a lot long before this because he trained so hard, and he figures that going to Japan and doing well over there kind of woke up everybody, and he was worried that his competition was going to change their strategies or their work habits. When I came over to these guys, I knew what I wanted, I knew I was... I really, really wanted to, to, you know, really make a big step this year, so I was just, you know, up front and honest and uh, just let everything I had hang out. <laughs> so it, it happened and it's working out great so far. The 250 riders on their parade lap, David Bailey. Look at Jeff Emming as he peers down and we see the Suzuki starting grid. Well, he's just not riding around this track. He's checking out everything he can to try to improve his performance tonight. The same thing he did in Houston. He spent a lot of time looking at the whoop section, and it made a difference there for him. The main event for the 250s, a 20-lap affair. Will we have a different winner for the third consecutive race? Let's go down to Marty Reed and check in with Marty. Let's update you on three of our key contenders. Talk to Jeff Emig. They softened the rear suspension. They want to try and bring that kick out of it that they had in the uh, semi and in the first heat. Ezra Lusk, all they did was change a set of Dunlops. They like the setup on the bike. They just want him to be a little bit more aggressive. Then I went to Jeremy McGrath. I said, what'd you change? He said, absolutely nothing. I've been listening to rad music. I'm ready to go race. <laughs> <laughs> they didn't have rap when you raced, David Bailey. No, no rap. And I, I, didn't, I didn't miss it. Didn't need any rap to keep me motivated. I just did a lot of uh, meditation, as a matter of fact. Listen to tapes and uh, try to picture the race exactly how I wanted it to go in my mind. Try to picture myself getting a great start and being safe and satisfied out there. It didn't always go exactly like I imagined in my mind, but it was one way to stay focused on the race. There's a lot of distractions at that level. Jeremy McGrath now moves into the gate. You know, they've done a lot of work between races. Jeremy told us that mentally he's going back to 1993 when all he worried about was getting off that gate first. I remember back in 93 when I first came onto the 250 scene, my main focus was to get a whole shot, get a good start. The rest of the race, I know how to ride. I mean, I know how to do all that part. The rest of the race will take care of itself. And it's... uh a lot easier when you don't have to deal with the people in the, in the back. 
Jeff Emig, a winner last year, right here in Phoenix. He just dominated everything last year after Jeremy went down. Didn't dominate things earlier. They had a hard time coming out of the heat race directly, but uh, again, same thing as Houston. There's one thing about Jeff Emig, that guy can't be counted out. He's a good closer. He's always been solid. The longer the day goes on, the longer the season goes on. He gets better. And Ezra Lusk make it two in a row, like Villeman did in the 125s. Lusk will be joined by McGrath, Craig, Button, Huffman, Wyndham, Henry, Ferry had did a great job in qualifying. Emig, Hughes, Albertine, Michael Brown, Larry Ward, Pichon, Lawrence, LaRocco, Heath Voss, Sean Sebastian Roy from Canada, Kyle Lewis, and Lance Smale. We've got a veteran lineup ready to go. As the board is sideways, it'll drop any minute. $1,500 for the whole shot winner. Oh, look at the charge. Who can it be? Michael Craig, number 13 to the inside. Emig crosses the line first, but Michael Craig gets the lead. So Emig will get the whole shot buddy. Michael Craig. Craig. Here comes Jeremy McGrath just blazes by Emig. Another, McGrath in second place. Another super start for Craig. That's what he needed to get. And McGrath did a beautiful job to control the inside of that first corner. Not the greatest start. Very wise through there. And look at it. Got a great look at the lead right now. Craig, McGrath, Henry, and Emig are battling it out for third. It is Jimmy Button in fourth, Ferry in fifth, Michael Brown in sixth. As McGrath thinks he's going to win here tonight, he cannot wait. Craig can ride hard enough and keep McGrath back there. McGrath has got to attack, get around him any way he can right now, or it's going to be a, lot of, a long main event for him. Can I tell you guys something? In the very, right there, great pass by McGrath. Sorry, it's a bad time to cut in. Saw McGrath riding aggressive. Now he's going to run. Jeremy McGrath takes over the lead from Honda Troy's Mike Front, or Michael Craig, I should say. So the Chaparral is out in front. This is the McGrath of 1996. Get a decent start. If you can't get the whole shot, put yourself in position. Attack right away. According to Skip Norfolk, run away and hide and let him race for second. So concentrating on that very beginning portion of the race is starting to pay off for Jeremy McGrath. Absolutely. Michael Craig not letting him off the hook is only one second back. Emig in third. But the thing that McGrath has right now is just enough of a lead so that he can afford to take whatever line he wants. He doesn't have to ride defensive into all the corners. That's going to help him pull away. Taking a look at the Suzuki Field Summary, McGrath, Craig, Emig, Lusk, and Henry with Ferry moving into sixth place. I'm impressed with Ferry as we take a look at Jeremy McGrath starting to stretch it out a bit. Look at here. Ezra Lusk is starting to put the challenge to Jeff Emig. Good block pass. That was exactly what we saw in the practice session earlier in the second practice. Emig only able to go for the double there. These guys got together, and I think they both felt like psychologically they won a battle. But you know, uh, Lusk having to make his move this early, though, because McGrath, well, the way he's pulling it out. He knows he's got to get up there quick or it's not going to happen. There you see Mike Gossler, Lusk's mechanic, putting something down on the board right now. Let's check it out. 52, that's his lap time. Yep, keep him focused on going fast. Lusk passed Emig in that corner where he made the pass in practice the same exact way. I thought, I don't know if that's too smart. You're, you're tipping your hand right there. Emig can cover that later on tonight. With 17 laps to go, let's go to Davey Coombs. I'll tell you what, I was taking a look at the back of the pack and watch what was happening. And actually, Ryan Hughes fell, but guys, Suzuki's woes continue. Pichon and Albertine and Ward are all like 15th or worse. I don't know what's going on there in the yellow truck, but just a horrible start to the main event here in Tempe. Jeremy McGrath is pulling out a lead right now. It's got to help him relax just a little bit. Now, I'm not saying that Craig is, is not of the caliber to be of a threat. He's won before. He is going fast, won his heat race, but I don't think McGrath feels real threatened by Craig, so to have him back there sort of as a buffer right now. McGrath, four and a half seconds in front of Craig. Lusk, Emig and Huffman now going at it. Here's Emig number one, and Damon Huffman, his teammate, number 15, a winner in Atlanta last year. Starting to climb that ladder a little bit. He's been riding fantastic. In fact, I was talking to Phil Lawrence a little bit. And, he, and or Larry Ward, I should say. And Larry was just saying, think about Huffman. He's ridden fantastic so far. Still hasn't got a top 10 finish. Just think of this, guys. If a teammate, David Huffman, gets in front of Emmy, think of what that does to the points race. 
Not only does Jeremy McGrath possibly break the tie with a win here, but it would set Emig even further back. Craig still in second place, and Ezra Lusk has pulled up within about five bike lengths. That's an interesting point, Art, the point situation. I think it's way too early in the season to see any kind of teamwork like that. McGrath, just brilliant, getting into the corners, backing it in, accelerating out, popping over everything. His timing looks great. Remember, he looked like this last year here, and then he made a bobble, went down, and cost him the win, so... Hopefully he can put that behind him and just focus, keep riding perfect laps. The 50,225 fans are looking at a battle now for second place. Number 13 is Michael Craig Honda of Troy. Ezra Lusk, number three from Team Honda, is right behind him. This is the only battle right now. It will be a battle, too. Lusk is not going to leave him alone. Craig is not easy to pass. McGrath attacked early, perhaps caught him a little bit off guard. Cam Lusk, after becoming the 14th rider to win on two different brands after his win last week, hold this position and get in front of Michael Craig for a second place finish and possibly move up in the point standings. We'll find out after this message. We're back with the 250 main. Round four from Tempe, Arizona, Sun Devil Stadium. More than 50,000 fans watching McGrath, Craig, Lusk, and Emmy. And right there, Lusk makes the move on Michael Craig. Same place he got passed by... Or the same place he passed Emmy. Uh, makes a great place to make the move after the whoops are so tired going to that corner. He tend to relax a little bit, and that's where he attacks. But does he have the time to make up five seconds on a very, very tight Jeremy McGrath as we take another look? Plenty of time left. Right there, you see nothing Craig could do there to retaliate. Just keep his balance because he knew that exiting that corner, Lusk would be in the way. Just take his time right out there in third. And here is our leader, Jeremy McGrath. Boy, that testing between races has really paid off for Jeremy, concentrating on the start. One thing he's doing here that I really like, I've seen a little bit more and more of it in each round, is he's getting on the gas so early out of the corner. See how that, he backs that back in, in there, and there's, no, there's not even any hesitation from being off the gas, off the brakes, and back to the throttle again. As we look at the battle for Ford, David Huffman trying to pick up on Jeff Emmy. Well, Jeremy McGrath has said that he's always been happy with the power and the chassis. It's just a little tweaking on the suspension uh, that needed to be done. Yeah, it seems like he's got that old rhythm back, that snap or whatever you want to call it, the ability to just hit the smallest bump and, and get up over anything. He, he's riding with a lot more confidence than he has, uh, I dare say, in the last 12 months. I need to get some of that music. Whatever he's listening to, I, I want to hear some of that. Even well, you had rap. some memorable moments here in Phoenix. Oh, God. We have to bring that up. <laughs> I only rode here once, and it wasn't a good night. I think I, I irritated a few people on the way back to the hotel, too, in my rental car. It was, it was not a good scene. I well, unfortunately, it was a turning point uh, for the season, really. Yeah, it was. This place has done that for a lot of people's career. For Emig last year, and it might be the same for Jeremy tonight. Here was last year's winner here in Phoenix, Arizona, near, near Tempe, I should say. Let's go down to Marty. Yeah, we're down here uh, watching Randy Lawrence right on here sprint and breathe. And his man is going to be coming around right by. As soon as he goes by, we'll get a chance. Look at him pointing to his head saying, think now, buddy, think. Randy? Mm -hmm. Let me ask you something. The guys were talking about, we talked to Jeremy, and he said he was listening to some music before the start of the race, and Bailey wants to know what the tune was, because it's really got him in rhythm. Uh, I don't know exactly what it was. He really likes uh, rap music, like uh, Puff Daddy and the Notorious Big, so I'm sure it was one of them. <laughs> okay, you want to hum a few bars for me? No, not me. <laughs> you, can you understand why this guy's got a smile on his face? His rider's well out in front. <laughs> Uh, he's riding fantastic, too. Jeff Emig still holding off his teammate, Damon Huffman, as McGrath just continues to pull a lead. Will we have three different winners in the first three races of the season, very similar to last year? Ten laps to go, so we're at the halfway point, David. Yeah, right now we get a look at uh, Jeff Emig and Damon Huffman riding together. Now, the thing I see happening here is they're going to push themselves up to Mike Craig because uh, I, I, I don't know what Mike Craig's shape is like or whatever, but in the past, he seems to have a lapse of concentration toward the end, so maybe if these two Kawasaki start working together, they could reel in some points there by picking up Craig. And with ten laps to go, which is an eternity on a Supercross track, Ezra Lusk is shaving out 
some time. Jeremy McGrath's lead. It's not over. McGrath is going to have to ride flawless from here on out. He's going to have to get the lucky breaks to all the lappers because luck is gaining fast. About a five-second lead on uh, Lusk right now as we take a look at the battle in back of them. McGrath, Lusk, Craig, Emig, Huffman, Henry, and LaRocco and Wyndham is now the official order. Emig over the triple, Huffman right there. It's on a track where you've got to get real aggressive, be a little mean, unless you get a lucky break for the pass. I would be surprised to see Huffman go in there and park Emig up in the high berm somewhere. I think these two are just going to try to ride together and play off each other, push each other a little bit, try to catch Craig. Ezra Lusk, outstanding focus. In fact, Cliff White, the 20-year veteran of Honda, compared him with Jeff Stanton's focus as far as practice and as far as race conditions. Let's get down to Marty. Guys, guys, you are talking about Ezra and the lead. The last two laps, it was 3.5 and then 3.2. And now Jeremy just goes by my position. Here comes Ezra Lusk. I can give you a look, quick look at my watch. And it's down to under three seconds, guys. He is closing. So the young man who swept Osaka and Tokyo had a tough time starting this season in uh, Los Angeles as we take a look at the Honda stopwatch is narrowing the lead. You can see a long, long, ways back. long ways back. Kyle Lewis, number 55, a lapper. Number 13 is Michael Craig in third place. There's Emig and Huffman. Pretty separated back to LaRocco coming through. Yeah. Emig and Huffman still in their own little battle. I don't think they're going to do anything dumb with each other. The only place I can see that Huffman can make a pass clean will be through the whoops. He is a little bit faster there. Not every lap. Sometimes if he stays close, he'll be able to make that move. Yeah, he's... Emig just barely holding on. Uh, Huffman has given him a great challenge. If Huffman was on a different color motorcycle just then, that would have been a pass. <laughs> Wouldn't have been pretty. Check out the lap time. 52.9. That's a good lap. That's about what they're running the heat races, but needs to be about a 51. Keep Lusk, Lusk off of him. That's it. Lusk is doing better than that. Damon Huffman trying everything he knows to move up the ladder and get by Emmy. Now uh, he just made a costly mistake right there. He needed to stay close entering the whoop section. That's where he could make a pass, and he made a mistake right at the entrance of it. You know, I take back what I said about Mike Craig earlier. Uh, he's riding very solid right now. And Emig and Huffman, again, they're really not pushing each other like I thought they were. Instead, they seem to be, you know, kind of jockeying for position. And uh, Craig's looking pretty solid for that podium right now. Taking a look at the Suzuki Field Summary, McGrath, Lesk, Craig in the podium spots for Jeff Emig. And it should be Huffman along with LaRocco after Huffman and Wyndham is following LaRocco. Now look at this. Look at this gap. McGrath coming out of the corner. Only got about a two-second lead now on Lusk. He knows he's there. Here's a tough thing. When you're out in the front leading and it looked like McGrath was just going to run away with this. And you get in that mode. You feel like, okay, everything's clicking. I'm, I'm looking good. All of a sudden, this guy starts catching and You've got to do something different. Pick up the pace. And that is so hard to do. Let's go down to Marty Reed. Marty. Well, guys, we're down here waiting for Ezra Lusk to come by. You can see Mike Gosler, his mechanic, he's got the stopwatch running. And it is less than 2.5 seconds. Ezra is closing, and we've still got five laps to go. Goose, I know you want to watch your guy, but can you take a moment to tell us what's gotten in him? Because he is really closing down here in the last half. Yeah, I think he's staying pretty consistent. I think Jeremy just made a couple mistakes the last lap, and he, he got a little bit of time on him. You got enough time to win this thing? Uh, we got five laps to go. We're going to wait and see. Okay. He's got a little smile on his face. <laughs> he, he thinks, well, he's got nothing to lose, that's for sure. He's got a mile over third and uh, everything to gain. I tell you one thing that's going to play into Lusk's hands is, remember this, they're lapped up to about the 12th place guy. The next guys in front of them, the guys they're going to lap are Albertine, Ward, Brown, Pichon, Button. Those guys are not going to pull over for anybody. It doesn't matter whether they get the blue flag or not, and that's going to play into Lusk's hands. Craig still in third, but Emming and Huffman still battling it out for fourth. Looks like it's... 
Huffman is just being frustrated right here. He's, I think he's right a little bit better than Emick. There he goes up the inside. Emick's just going to, well, I thought he was going to let him have it. Looks like they're dancing out there, don't they? Yeah, they're just playing around, I think. Yeah, they're, believe me, they're trying everything they can, but this, this is some, these kinds of corners and the way he's got to ride and the way the block passing is taking place, I, I just never liked this kind of layout. I just never did well here, and I think he's, especially Emick. I was going to say you're a little prejudiced, though. Jean-Michel Bale loved it. Yeah, well, there's guys that do, but it just doesn't look like <laughs> Emick's comfortable out there. Here we see McGrath coming up on those lap drives. Let's see if this might be a big factor, David. Yeah, I'd like to see, like, right here, you can see the two Suzuki's getting together. Now, I don't think they're going to let McGrath by. Watch this. Now, Lutz is going to pull right up. Oh, here. baby! See the blue flag waving, but I don't think those guys are paying attention because they're racing for points, too. That's absolutely right. With three laps to go, can Ezra Lutz pick up a Jeremy McGrath? Lutz! Now is about six bike lengths as they go through the loops. Whoa, Lutz got all out of control, but he is he wants it bad. He oh, he's hanging on. He did not know Lusk is putting his heart into it. Four more top lap riders coming up. You see how good it did for Lusk that time. He's going to have Brown, and he's going to have uh, Albertine. He's going to lap next. Boy, adrenaline right now is at an all-time high. The crowd is into it. You can barely hear. Albertine, number seven. Mike Brown, number 100, as Jeremy McGrath has Ezra Lusk right on his back cover. And Ezra Lusk collides with Jeremy McGrath. The bump and run. That's what you got to expect on this track. And Ezra Lusk has taken the lead from Jeremy McGrath. Here comes Jeremy right back in the timing section. Jeremy McGrath, Ezra Lusk. Ezra Lusk is out in front. Noses out. Will McGrath put it to him? Yeah, he did. Yes, sir. Right Turnabout's fair play, but Ezra slips it and uh, now has a pretty good clear shot. McGrath's got to run at the whoops. McGrath's been exiting the whoops fantastic that particular time through. Lutz got a great burst of power. If McGrath can't get any closer than this, he won't be able to do anything. He's got to get right there to take advantage of anything. That... Let's take another look at both of those passes now, and we'll keep you posted verbally. Well, let's stop the finish line fight. jump. The first one, but Lutz, McGrath just left that door a little bit too far open. Lutz went in there. He looks back like, sorry, dude, I, I had to get in there and make the pass. McGrath right here across the inside. Oh, oh, right back. Back. through the timing section. Lust just barely noses out with good timing and good power. Now right here, Lust doesn't know what to do. He's got, it's a slow race through every corner because they've got to protect that line. This is the final lap. Can Ezra Lust make it two in a row? Can Jeremy McGrath win his first race of the season? Becoming only the second rider in Supercross history to make a win on three different brands. But Ezra Lust now has the advantage. Let's check it out as they approach Albertine now. The last Last corner is going to be interesting. McGrath's got to get a little closer, but the last corner is wide open. Ezra Lush takes lead. the inside line. The checkers for Ezra Lush. Yeah. Ezra Lush winning his fourth career victory. His first ever back-to-back -back super cross victory. Oh my goodness. Last year's two wins, Orlando and Pontiac, separated by a third in St. Louis. And look at there, Jeff Stanton, Mike Gosler. Is that a happy bunch? Ezra Lusk got here in Phoenix without his luggage. He had a two-day growth beard. He actually looked older than he does with that baby face of his. He had to borrow knee braces to practice yesterday. Puts on the goggles. It's hard to contain him. And as high as Ezra Lusk is right now, I'm sure Jeremy McGrath, who takes over the points lead, quite possibly, I haven't added him up yet, Jeremy McGrath is probably extremely disappointed right about now after one of the great crowd freezing races of the year. We'll be right back. Marty Reed has the wonderful pleasure of talking with both these young men. As Jerry McGrath, you see great sportsmanship. He knows he's in the hunt. We'll be right back with their comments. Get $500 worth of accessories for free and choose from great deals like zero down or low APR financing on selected models. 
outstanding competition as we take a look at Jeremy McGrath, who was leading this race. Ezra Lusk made the important move, but the lappers became even more important. Lusk, the winner. McGrath, second. Craig, third. Emig, fourth. Huffman, fifth. Then it was Wyndham, LaRocco, Hughes, Pichon, and Button. Let's go down to Marty Reed. Down here with the winner, a very happy two times in a row. You realize you've gone from 16th place after round one. You're now in third place in the points. Nice ride. Well, thanks a lot. You know, I want to thank the good Lord Jesus Christ for keeping me safe, first of all. And Honda and Dunlop and Fox for giving me out of that start and get good. And, uh, you know, I don't know what to say. I just, I tried to ride smooth and as smart as I can. I knew Jeremy was hauling butt in his heat race. And we made a couple little changes. And uh, I just tried to get my flow back. I wasn't flowing very good at all in the heat race. And uh, I was able to catch Jeremy in the, the race. And uh, we were quite aggressive there at the end. But it was a lot of fun. Let's move over here as you take the uh, champagne, move over here and get to Jeremy McGrath. And Jeremy, uh, uh, I gotta tell you, I know you're not real happy with second place, but it was thrilling for all of us to watch and the fans were literally jumping out of their seats. Yeah, it was a really good race. Um, Ezra rode a strong race. Um, I mean, the lappers were terrible at this track and I know he was catching me a little bit, but you know, towards the end, the lappers weren't moving. They weren't obeying the flags. and. You know, I mean, there was a group of them ahead of me, and they were battling, but, you know, I was still in the lead, and they should have moved, and, and I think that probably attributed a little bit to my slowness towards the end. But, I mean, overall, I was fast all night. I felt really good, and I uh, have to just go get them next week. Well, the bad news is to you, you know, you finished in second place. The good news is you've got the points lead. Yeah, that's the good part. I haven't had a points lead in the Supercross Series in over a year, and, uh, I mean, I'm happy about that for sure. <laughs> and, guys, that could be a frightening thought if we think back to you years ago <laughs> absolutely right as we take a look at the suzuki point standings it is mcgrath in first place four points ahead of jeff emig 64 to 60 ezra lusk moving up with 55 points into the third place spot as we take a look at the point standings mike a great start finished third though you just couldn't quite hold on with these guys what was the difference in your mind out there um i felt like the whoops was my point and my qualifier where i won i could make a lot of time up there and i was attacking them so hard that i was making so many mistakes and uh i seen them coming you know they're right on me so you know i got to kind of start last week i kept falling and falling so but I